notice that quote from 1984? Those who control the present control the past right? That's what it is. Because when you control the present, you're very literally able to go and rewrite history, which is literally what Winston's job was in 1984. If there was an unfortunate occurrence in the newspapers in the past that they wanted to disappear from reality, they would simply have Winston write a completely fabricated story to replace in the newspaper instead with the offending story so that they could control how people perceived history. So of course, you live in this reality where no one really knows what is true and there's literally no way to check it. And this is what came to mind for me when I saw this article. San Francisco to rename Abraham Lincoln High School because former president did not demonstrate that Black Lives mattered to him as woke renaming committee also takes aim at Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein. I'm sorry, what? Did we suddenly transport into an alternate reality in which Abraham Lincoln was not responsible for freeing the slaves? Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on with the renaming of this high school. A San Francisco district is planning to rename a school named after Abraham Lincoln because the former president did not demonstrate that black lives mattered to him. I cannot even... I cannot even believe that this is a sentence that I'm reading, but this is peak 2020. I thought we'd already reached peak 2020. Apparently we still have two more weeks left to go of this cursed year. The president, who is often held up as an American hero for abolishing slavery, is just one of 44 historical figures soon to have their names scratched off schools within the San Francisco Unified School District. The other names include George Washington. Why would we want to have schools named after George Washington? Why? Herbert Hoover? and Senator Dianne Feinstein, whose name will be stripped from the Dianne Feinstein Elementary School for allowing the Confederate flag to fly outside of City Hall back in 1984 when she was mayor. If I could beat my head on my desktop right now, I'm pretty sure I would. Now, to be frank, when I saw Dianne Feinstein's name, I was kind of like, they're doing this because she gave Lindsey Graham a hug after the Amy Coney Barrett hearings. That's kind of what I thought. I was like, they're doing this because he was pissed off over the hug. No, it's even stupider than that. They're pissed off at something she did almost 40 years ago. The renaming of the schools comes as part of a nationwide reckoning around racial justice that has seen Confederate flags banned, military bases renamed, and Statues toppled of racist and Confederate figures across America in the wake of the police killings of George Floyd. Of course, I'm sure that they mean Thomas Jefferson and George Washington as some of those racist statues that were toppled. The district's renaming committee decided Lincoln is not worthy of keeping his name on Abraham Lincoln High School because the majority of his policies proved to be detrimental to Native Americans. Okay, so at least uh, you know uh, they, they couldn't find anything. They couldn't. They couldn't get him on Black Lives Matter, which is which is a little bit bizarre because that's how this was portrayed anyway. Because now they've moved over to Native Americans, which I don't want to diminish the contributions of Native Americans. I think they've been treated horribly, but typically you don't actually find the woke focus to be on Native Americans. You typically only find that they are only interested in black people and that's it. They are not interested in Hispanics. They're not interested in Latinos. They downright classify Asians as white. I literally have another article on my desktop right now that's all about how Asian students are, they've, they've ascended to whiteness. So at least they're focusing on on another population of people of color that aren't black, but that doesn't make this any less stupid. Abraham Lincoln is not seen as much of a hero at all among American Indian nations and native peoples of the United States as the majority of his policies prove to be detrimental to them. The committee meeting notes state under his watch, indigenous peoples had much of their land taken away from them. In 1862, the Homestead Act, where citizens could claim ownership of 160 acres of land, and the Pacific Railway Act, which gave railroad companies permission to build a transcontinental railroad through America, led to the significant loss of land and natural resources, and as well as the loss of life and culture and for many indigenous peoples, the committee said. It also, you know, gave us the goddamn railroad, but, the, but who's really counting there? In 1864, the Lincoln administration then oversaw the deportation of the Navajo tribe from their land, which is now Arizona. The tribe was forced to march a brutal 450-mile journey 
to, I don't know how to pronounce that, New Mexico. And dude, I'm not going to lie. That's not good. That is not good. It is not good at all. It is something that was an, uh, an evil thing that happened in our past. But Abraham Lincoln is like provably one of the greatest presidents this country had ever had. And listen, presidents are not perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect human being out there, but he was good and he was good. He was a man of his time and he did the very best he could, man. And you know what? I don't agree with all the decisions he's made. I don't agree with all the decisions that any president has made. I know that the left likes to argue that Barack Obama never did anything wrong ever because they forget about all the drone strikes. But you know, maybe maybe 50 years from now, we'll be having a conversation about all the school names that Barack Obama got, re name got removed from. Who the hell knows? The walk became known as the Long Walk of the Navajo, with at least 200 dying on the route and over 2,000 dying during the conflict before a treaty was signed in 1868, granting the Navajo permission to set up a reservation. Lincoln was also behind the largest mass hanging in U.S. history. <laughs> Demonetized! <laughs> <laughs> this video just got demonetized, where 38 Dakota men were condemned to death in Minnesota in 1862 for their part in the Dakota War. He did, however, commute the sentences of 264 others, preventing them from meeting the same fate. How much you want to bet that the people that were on this stupid school renaming committee didn't know any of this until it was pointed out to them. And they're like, oh, we have to, like, we, can, we have to virtue signal our way out of this horrible mess. Other reasons for the president's ousting include rampant corruption in the Indian office, the precursor of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, continued unabated throughout Lincoln's term and well beyond where government appointed Indian agents stole resources meant for the tribes. The history of Lincoln and Native Americans is complicated, not nearly as well known as that of the Civil War slavery. Jeremiah Jeffries, chairperson of the renaming committee and a first grade teacher, told San Francisco Chronicle. Lincoln, like the presidents before him and most after him, did not show through policy or rhetoric that black lives ever mattered to them outside of the human capital and casualties of wealth building. Okay, so this is where we bring in Black Lives Matter. Now we have this historian dude, this guy right here, who's going to explain how black lives didn't matter to Abraham Lincoln. When we just said the first half of the flipping article wasn't even about black people, it was about Native Americans. But of course, none of that matters when we're dealing with woke crazy. Jeffrey said the committee decided on the renaming once they discussed Lincoln's treatment of Native Americans and that the positive parts of his record cannot discount the negative. The discussion for Lincoln centered around his treatment of First Nation peoples because that was the that was offered first, he said. Once he met criteria in that way, he did not belabor the point. The move has become the source of some debate, however, one would think. To many, Lincoln is one of the greatest presidents America has seen with his leadership during the Civil War and abolition of slavery, a critical and progressive movement in the move towards racial equality across the nation. In 1954, in Peoria, Illinois, he said, my ancient faith teaches me that all men are created equal and that there are no moral rights in the connection with one man's making a slave of another. In 1960, or 18, 19, geez. In 1863, he then issued the Emancipation Proclamation, declaring that all persons held as slaves within the rebellious states are and henceforth set free. And this is actually an important point. This, this is what I'm surprised didn't get brought up because the reason that he did this in the rebellious states, I studied actually a lot of the Civil War in college, although I'm sure many of you are actually more Civil War buffs than me at this point, but here's, here's my recollection from 20 years ago in college. The reason it stated all the rebellious states, basically the state, the states that that went to war with the south, the southern states that went to war with the north, which is not necessarily to say that he freed all the slaves. That's why Juneteenth is a thing, right? But he freed them in the rebellious states so that they couldn't use them to help fight the Civil War. I'm actually surprised that this is not the point because some people argue that this was not an act of humanitarian good on Lincoln's part. It was like a pragmatic thing in order to win the Civil War. Yeah, he has also made a number of racist comments. He lived in the 1800s. Anything that Lincoln says is going to be considered racist today. Uh, yeah, he also made a number of racist comments, such as arguing there is a physical difference between black and white races, and that he favored the superior position assigned to the white race in 1858. Yes, that is a pretty racist thing to say, but it was 1858. Can we please, for the love of God, start to have some perspective? 
There is a physical difference between the white race and black white race, which I believe will forever forbid the two races from living together on terms of social and political equality, Lincoln is quoted as saying, and thank God he was wrong about that. Harold Hoser, a Lincoln scholar and director of the Hunter College's Roosevelt House Public Policy Institute, says he disagreed with the renaming of the Abraham Lincoln High School. Finally, someone with some sense. He saved the country from dividing and ruin, he told the San Francisco Chronicle. He should be honored for it. Measuring the worth of historical figures by modern standards is problematic, he said. No one is going to pass 21st century mores if you're looking at 18th and 19th century. And that is really the point at the end of the day. So this article keeps going on about some other stuff that's happening. I will link it in the description below if you want to take a look at Probably the stupidest 2020 thing I've seen yet. No, actually, I take that back. The whole PhD argument is still the top stupid thing because people on, what are we on, like day six of talking about this now are still all fired up about this. And people are really, really passionate that Jill Biden shouldn't be called doctor, which is, again, the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. And it's petty bullshit. And if you honestly care that Joe Biden is called doctor, you have you 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 have ascended to peak 2020 stupid. And honestly, if you're one of those people, you and I don't align, like stay the F out of my comments because I'll probably end up blocking you for it. Honestly, that's how I feel about this whole thing at this point. It's ridiculous. I'm so over I'm gonna have a bad attitude moment for a second. Not only am I over this, like I left the left because of nonsense like this. And now to have to deal with equally stupid nonsense on the right, I'm over 2020. I'm done. I'm done. I just don't care anymore. I'm doing my best to stay sane while everyone around me is losing their minds. I know a lot of you actually feel the same as me on this. I think it's too bad. I think it's ridiculous. I don't really know where we go from here if the thing that we're arguing about is Abraham Lincoln did not support black lives and Jill Biden shouldn't be called doctor because she doesn't have the right kind of doctorate for your fragile sensibilities. I just don't know anymore, man. We're going to hell in a handbasket. That's all I've got for right now. I'll be back tomorrow with some more chipper sunshine news. Ah, oh, okay. I'll see you soon.